are presidents who are not the ones who are doing something when they announce someone's name in the mosque. They're not announcing because the guy is amazing. It's because the evil of this guy, if he doesn't get recognized, will destroy me. Talha, Zubair, what was it with Ali ibn Abi Talib? Wallah, they wanted one thing. Make us governors. That's all we'll do. Mawla, because he was so just, said to them, Baba, you are not fit to be governors. What? We are the ones who open this religion. We are the ones who did what? We're the ones who built Islam. You don't give us governorship? Wallah will destroy the next few years of your life. You know when Muslims hear this, you know what they say? Subhanallah. Amazing. History. Wallah, the Muslim communities are no different. If somebody doesn't give you a position in that mosque, you'll be a terror for them till they die. Why? Why? Talha and Zubair were people we women to learn from. Learn in which way? That look how fickle dunya was. Talha and Zubair gave their life to Islam when they were younger. At the end, Talha is killed. By who? He is killed by Marwan ibn al-Hakam. And Zubair is killed by who? He is killed by someone who when Zubair left the battlefield, that person came and killed him. What happened therefore? Mawla, when he attacked the dunya, why did he attack the dunya, my dear brothers and sisters? Because he saw those who fell for this dunya. Wallah! And let me tell you something even about myself, just to be frank. Even when I recite on Mimbar al Hussein, if I get caught up in he said and she said, then I've lost the point of all of this. My name will not remain. Aba Abdullah's name remains. Let's be frank. Sometimes people don't realize they get caught up. He said, she said, they attacked me. Don't get caught up. We're all going to go qabr in a few years' time. One man's flag remains alive from Karbala forever. You, you will die. But it's not enough for us to say, Masha Allah, and for us to say, Subhanallah. Because why? Because for us, we have to learn from this moment. Mawla turned around. What did he say? He said, O oh world, deceive other than me. I have divorced you three times. Why, Mawla? Because you hate dunya? Wallah, he didn't hate dunya. He hated how dunya destroyed some people's lives. Yes? Those people whose lives were destroyed by this dunya, those people fell for the traps of dunya. You, Talha, you, Zubair, you become governors of Basra and Kufa. Why would that be important for you? You were already companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Is there a bigger honor than being a sahabi of Rasulullah? What is Salman? What is Abu Dhar? What is Miqdad? What is Ammar? The greatest companions of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. Today, do I remember the governorship they held? Or do I remember the principles they held? Our mosques can easily fall for dunya traps. If they don't vote me as president, then they will be at the receiving end of me burning the next few years of their committee. Why, Baba, why? You are an Alawi or you are a Jamali. An Alawi is someone who looks at Mawla having sabr for 25 years for the sake of the religion of Islam. Do you think Saqifa was easy? You think it was easy for Mawla to see what happened at Saqifa? Did he turn around and say, I'm going to be a torment to all of you? Wallah, look at the class of the man. The man, how classy. And that's why when someone came to him and said, why in your time we have so many wars when you're Khalifa? Whereas in the time of the first two caliphs, we never had wars. He said, because in their time they had people like me. Whereas in my time, I deal with people like you. True? In their time, they had a man like me. Whether I'm at the front or I'm at the back, the main thing is Islam is at the front. The main thing is the community is at the front. 
The main thing is that I make sure that Allah's message is at the front. Whether I'm the one who gets a plaque in their name at the end, or I'm the one who's announced by the community, doesn't matter. What matters is what is given to Allah continues to grow all the time. Therefore, what did Mawla say? Mawla said, Dunya, deceive other than me. I have divorced you three times. Not because he hated Dunya, but because he was saying that type of trapping will not be made for me. You want to make a booby trap in this world? I'm not going to get trapped by what they got trapped by. What they got trapped by? They saw the glimmering lights, the bright lights, and they thought, you know what? I have to have this power. If it means I kill someone behind the door, then so be it. If it means that I have to trample on someone's rights, then so be it. The main thing is that the Ummah remembers me as Khalifa so-and-so. Whereas Mawla, subhanallah, you look at him. He didn't chase what was rightfully his. Because why? Because number one, Ghadir was already his forever. But also because number two, he highlighted this dunya can't trap me. It tried. Abu Sufyan tried to trap me. He said to me, let's go and fight for your right. But I know Abu Sufyan. And I know that his trap is a trap of dunya. I will never fall for the traps of dunya. Why? Because life is short. Its importance is little. Its aspiration is base. Alas, the provision that we have is little. And the way is long. And the journey is far. And the goal is hard. Because, ya Habibi, this dunya is used for you for one reason. And that is to collect provisions for the long journey of akhirah as well. That's why you find... In Hadith 77, Mawla attacks the dunya. But when someone attacks the dunya in front of him, Mawla attacks that person. What do we mean? Look at the other side of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Hadith 131, Nahj al -Balagha. A man comes to Imam Ali alayhi salam, says, My brother is the man of dunya. All of us, at one stage or another, have to be aware of a disease where we get jealous of a family member. When they become rich, we begin to stab them because of hasad. Listen to this. The man comes to Mawla. My brother's become, um, he's a man of dunya. Mawla turns around to him and says, he's what? He says, a man of dunya. Mawla turned around and said, you covered something and then you begin to abuse it? You covered the world and then you turn around and abuse this world? He then says, should you accuse it? Or maybe it should accuse you. When was this world deceiving? Did it not show you how your fathers decayed and your mothers are buried under the ground? Look at what he's saying. Dunya, it's a wonderful school that you could attend. How many of you, your dads in the Qabristan? Ask yourself. How many of you, your dads in the Maqbara in the Muslim world? Ask yourself. Did that not wake you up to stop causing a fitna in this dunya? When your dad is now six feet under the ground, that life is so short. How lovely dunya is. How lovely it is, Mawla says. Our fathers have decayed. And our mothers are under the ground. You said dunya deceived you. Dunya gave you an amazing lesson. If I went to a uni that gave me the lessons that dunya has given me, wallah, I'll pay hundreds of millions for that university. Because then Mawla says what? Dunya, it is the house of what? He says, Daru Sitqin, Daru Afiyah, Daru Ghina. It is a place of what? It is a place of truthfulness. It is a place of safety. It is a place of wealth. Listen to his words. It is a place of what? Truthfulness, safety, and wealth. It is a house of each of these. Why? It is a house of truthfulness for those who appreciate the truth that's in front of them. Subhanallah. This dunya, there are so many signs of Allah in this dunya if you can appreciate it. It's beautiful. If a person goes snorkeling, scuba diving, they see the creations of Allah. What a lovely dunya you've created. Now I appreciate my Lord more when I pray. Because truly I'll say subhanallah when I've seen all the bright colors. 
This dunya, he says, number one, daru sidqin, for those who can appreciate it. Number two, daru ghina, is a place of wealth for those who gather the wealth of this world to use it for the hereafter. Yes? It's a place for, of safety for those who appreciate it. And then he says what? Daru maw'idha. It is a place of instructions for those willing to take those instructions. Why? Around us every single day in this dunya, wallah, it's beautiful. Every day there's a lesson. How can I attack dunya? Every day there's a beautiful lesson in life. My 16-year-old friend dies in a car crash. What's a lovely lesson in this dunya that never think you'll live till 70. Your best friend could die so young. I look at someone getting divorced and I realize what a dunya this is. I should be blessed that I have a wonderful wife or a wonderful husband when I see people whose marriages break. I see someone losing their baby. What a wonderful dunya that I'm blessed to have my children. Look how someone has been tested with theirs. When I see people giving iftar, alhamdulillah, I have iftar and there are poor people in the world who have no iftar. When I see a house that I have, what a dunya, I have a lovely house and there are others in the world that don't have shelter. How could you attack this dunya? Mawla then continues, what does he say? This dunya has been a home for the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't Medina part of dunya? Mecca is part of dunya? Karbala is part of dunya? Najaf is part of dunya? Then what's wrong with dunya when I have those four lands I could visit and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala?